Hello everybody, joy, love, and peace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you guys, and welcome to Articulating Faith. And today's topic is going to be none other than faith itself. What it means, you know, faith has been under fire for a while, although nothing is new under the sun, you know, it's it's been like this way forever, really. Um, but here... I want to talk exactly what it means because some people believe we have blind faith that we just you know follow what our pastors say we just sort of follow what people say first of all I say that that is wrong we need to check up on everything that people say to the Word of God and see if it holds and if it has any scrutiny up to it but I would like to share a bit out of um, Psalm 36 because I I personally believe David really understood what it was to live by faith because think about it he started off as a shepherd boy with God seeking after God's own heart he had a mighty victory for Israel then people started persecuting him they became jealous of God's favor upon him his own people and started plotting to kill him and he forgave them and he could have killed them and chose not to then he fell away and it was through that struggle in hell that he got the best view of God it's the same as the prodigal son it was when the prodigal son was in that far-off land as a slave eating pig food that he really understood who the father was now does that mean we should go out and sin to know God's grace and and love may it never be and those people who teach this kind of thing well their condemnation is deserving but let's hear what Dave uh, David has to say Psalm 36, an oracle is within my heart concerning the sinfulness of the wicked. There is no fear of God before his eyes, for in his own eyes he flatters himself too much to detect or hate his sin. The words of his mouth are wicked and deceitful. He has ceased to be wise and to do good. Even on his bed he plots evil. He commits himself to a sinful course and does not reject what is wrong. Your love, O oh Lord reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, your justice like the great deep. O Lord, you preserve both man and beast. How priceless is your unfailing love. Both high and low among men find refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights. For with you, is the fountain of life. In your light, we see light. Continue your love to those who know you, your righteousness to the upright in heart. May the foot of the proud not come against me, nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. See how the evildoers lie fallen, thrown down, not able to rise. Mm, amen. And so... I really wanted to emphasize verse 5. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. God is abundantly faithful to us. And seeing how some time about faith, it's only appropriate to read from the chapter of faith. The letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews 11. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for, and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice. 
Okay, I just want to stop right there because this is very important. Now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. So we hope in the Lord. We put our hope and our trust in the Lord, who we do not see. God has remained relatively hidden. Why? Because God is not a created thing in the universe, but the creator of the universe. And so if we could see him in the universe, that would not be God. That would be simply a created thing. We don't, we don't worship idols. Moreover, Paul writes about ex nihilo, the creation of the universe from nothing. And the Christian who teaches this is up to date with the most modern science we have today. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. See, God is the creator of everything. And not a creator that came to be and recreated lifeless plasma in the universe or lifeless nebula gases or whatever. But he spoke it into existence by his word. And by that same word, he makes our hearts new. And he makes us new creatures in himself. When we put our faith and trust in him, he then acts. He doesn't forcefully push himself upon us. I also wanted to talk a bit about the verse that says, We don't walk by, by what we see. We don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. What does that mean? Does that mean we have blind faith? Certainly not. Because from the Middle East... To London, we have museums filled with ancient artifacts proving the Bible to be true. We have manuscripts, thousands and thousands in copies. Finding the Dead Sea Scrolls. Amazing. Finding pieces of John's Gospel. And I truly believe that another astonishing find is coming up just around the corner and so it means that we don't let our situations compromise the gospel we don't let the situations around us that we see compromise our trusting in God we don't let our situations compromise God's word this is very hard to do but once followed the bun the abundance of blessings is unsurpassing. We can't even fathom the wonderful things that God has ahead of us. And thank you for watching, guys. Take care and God bless you.